Yo, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am the one and true and living legend, Hunter J23 of Independent Scene Podcast. I want to take this opportunity right now to thank you guys for joining me uh, on, on a special edition. This is part two with my conversation with the with the talented singer and actress Sandra Carella Young um, from Tyler Perry's beat from Tyler Perry's Bruh on BET, which you can catch. Uh, during the week on BET. Uh, I'm definitely honored to have her in the bed with me. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, help me please welcome my guest back to Independent Scene Podcast, my special, special guest, and my auntie, that being the real Sandra Corelli. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. How are you? I'm back. I'm you're <laughs> back, and I'm, again, thanks again for coming back. I definitely have been waiting for. The, I've definitely been counting down the time to get a chance to talk to you again. So it's definitely a pleasure and an honor talking with you. Thanks for having me back. We did have a good time that last time. Most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> uh, one, one, okay. Okay. So um, I I wanna. So I want to say, first of all, you know, how honored I was to not only have a chance to meet you, you know, but to be able to really get some in some insight from you and from your career, you know. And so I, and so I kind of want to pick back up from that because there were so many other things, like I told you, that I really wanted to get into. <laughs> and so we're going to definitely get into it. So my first thing I want to I want to get into you with about is, you know, you start very, very, uh, at a very, I want to say, high peak of your time, you know, with Medea's class reunion. And I want to talk to, I want to talk about that because, you know, your role as, as the maid really truly showed, you know, the diversity in which roles that you play, that you've played. So talk to us a little bit about what that, what that experience was like, you know, playing or being in a production such as class reunion and really, you know, working with the cast and things of that nature. Well, uh, that was my first, uh, well, actually the second play that I, I did with Tyler. And uh, it was a big gap in between the first play and the second play that I did with him. But in between those two plays, I mean, he just blew up, you know. Okay. So uh, he could kind of have anybody he kind of wanted kind of around that time, you know, to be a part of his productions. So that was like... Um, just an honor because what he did was he got some of the best people that were were on the I call it the urban uh, theater uh, okay. circuit. You know, people like um, David and Tam Mann, uh, De Deatra Hicks, uh, Cheryl Pepsi Riley, uh, uh, Terrell Carter. I mean, he yes. went in and with a cast like that. You know, um, and with the genius of Tyler, I mean, I think we ran um, for a few years. I mean, it was maybe a couple of years mm -hmm. uh, that the play was able to run. I mean, which is pretty hard to do now. Okay. Uh, uh, plays can't go out. I mean, we would be out uh, the entire time. Okay. You know, um, I think we took off like for Christmas, like December. Okay. And then we would start back in January. Okay. You know? So, yeah, I mean, like a real tour. So, okay. um, and that was my first time working uh, with those uh, performers. And okay. I thought, well, you know, they were out there like giving 120%, you know? Right, <laughs> right. And I was just like, okay, oh, okay. Well, I'm, you know, I'm used to that, you know? Right. Um, but it was just great. So every night um, we would be like challenged by each other. And, you know, mm -hmm. and they, um, uh, a positive way. It wasn't a mm -hmm. bad competition. It was. It was actually healthy mm -hmm. because it kept the show always um, consistent. Okay. Consistently good okay. because everybody expected to. They were just expected to step up. Okay. It just wasn't no. You know, it just wasn't a question. And we right. enjoyed working with each other. I think that was you know just the respect of people's work ethic. You know, right. somebody got a great work ethic, you know, it right. kind of makes it easy for you. <laughs> right, right. Exactly, exactly. Now, let me ask you this, because, you know, also during that play, you know, you know, of course, Tyler, he has this great thing of, of adding so many songs that I feel <laughs> like can really touch a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, and 
that was the old there was one there was a song in there um that you sung you know i need thee which is mm -hmm. very uh, a very uh old time hymn you know right so, right you know when you you know to see someone like yourself who is able to sing a song like that for for it being what it is yeah tr it truly just signifies how again how verse you had you have been throughout your career so what i want to know is with the music aspect of it for you you know knowing that you had this you know you had these shows that you were doing and you're on the road were these were these songs that you were doing in these in in this production was there even a thought in your mind like okay you know tyler's gonna choose me to sing this particular song or was there or was there a moment or a time period where you wanted a song to you want to sing a song but tyler already had it written out for you that's interesting because uh i need the uh was just relative to the character because i played a, a older woman so she would sing the hymns that's what mm -hmm. she um and that was another thing that i really got from working um with tyler and that cast because um the thing about music is mm -hmm. that people like to put you in a certain genre right you know? right and people have put me in a certain like an r b uh jazz genre so that was that for me that stretched me because i was around uh gospel singers i was people around people that was you know um very fluent in singing uh inspirational music okay so i you know even though i knew inspirational music and i heard uh i need thee i never sung it before mm -hmm. so that was my first time singing it and as i was singing it it began to um just minister to me mm -hmm. um just as an entertainer and a lot of times you know it's for us you know um mm -hmm. and the audience just happens to get it because okay. i just believe god just you know he you know, he touches you and reaches you where you are. And right. so it doesn't matter if you're in a play, mm -hmm. uh, he'll use the play to get, you know, <laughs> get the message, a message across. over to you. Right. And that's when I kind of really, you know, expanded my spirit man. And as I began to integrate, because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to integrate that part of me into what I was doing. Um, so it was like just a perfect pairing. You know, mm -hmm. just he picked that song and that song just was so easy for me to become a part of and understand, okay. you know? Yeah. Right. And, and then, you know, I know you saw the video where he did like a video, when he did the video of it, he had a piece of it where we kind of acted it out. Mm -hmm. he, I did see that. I did see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, and when I saw it like that, I really got it. You know, okay. what I mean? when I saw it like that, I really got it because the stage okay. is one thing because you're performing, mm -hmm. but you see the it in the scene and mm -hmm. hear me singing it, it all kind of really came together. You Most know, definitely. for me. Most definitely. And like I said, I, I got to say, you know, from that particular play, that is one of my favorite songs out of that song. I'm glad. By, That's by a great you. song. It is. It is. And the other song that I, I, I really found of it that really uh there was a, a fan of mine was the one that you and Cora did. Um in the um the one where you guys were in the hotel room and y'all and that's that particular song I can't remember entirely what the particular song that was. Um but you and her was you know you was basically talking about you know your daughter who was you know strung out on right. drugs things of right. that nature. Right. And, right. And 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 Cora she she sung that song to you and I, you know it, it's it always amazes me how Tyler, again, like I said earlier, he puts these songs out there for you got for you singers and entertainers to sing. And it's like, you know, you may hear it originally from 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 the artists that put it out. Yeah. But, but for people like yourself that can take a song like that and just put your own little twist and spin on it, that's absolutely amazing. Like I love the versatility with that. Yeah, I mean, that's part of his gift to be able to match those songs up. Uh, in the storyline right you know and he just like he just hears it he goes like that that song like that that that's the song for that scene you mm -hmm. know and it just it always it always works 
I mean, and and that particular time he was writing a lot of the songs. Then then he began to write a lot of the songs, which was great, which was, <laughs> you know, it made sense. It was a progression for him because mm -hmm. at first he was doing other people's songs, but as he went on, mm -hmm. he started growing as a writer and a storyteller. He began to put the music okay. with his uh playwriting. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it became originals. Also that kind of helps too when it comes to those copyrights. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. Right, 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 right. Uh, I want, look, don't want to get in trouble now, as they say. That's right. And then you want to make the money. You know? Right. <laughs> exactly. That's right. All right. All right. So I have a question from JT Shizzle. He wants to know, what is your favorite song that you've sung in a play? Wow. Ooh, that's a hard one. I mean, it all depends. Is it like a Tyler Perry play? No, it's a Tyler Perry. Perry play. Wow, I had the song that I did in um, uh, "What's Done in the Dark," mm -hmm. and it was called Jehovah Jireh. Right, and that was one of my favorites. Of course, um, "Heaven Waits for Me" is another one. But uh, "Heaven Waits for Me" is just that. The reason why I don't quite say that is because because it's about transition, which is not mm -hmm. a bad thing because that's what she's saying. You know, I'm going to be with the Lord. Right. Um, so for that type of thing, that's like my favorite. And then Jehovah Jireh. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, it's funny. It's funny that you mentioned Heaven Waits for Me because, it, like you said, that, that is one of those songs that's a transitional song. And thank um, you, JT. <laughs> most definitely. So let me ask you this, though, because, you know, you, you know, you've went from being a maid to being a wife to being, you know, um, a mom, you know, in most of these productions and plays. Mm -hmm. um, what role do you feel like for you has really kind of like brought you out of your yourself or bring, and brought you out of that character? Um, out, out of these other characters, all these, out of, out, out of all the characters, yeah. Uh, yeah well, out of, all the, out of all the characters that you've played, what's been the most uh, role that you've loved doing the most for yourself? Mm, for myself, that's interesting because, like, again, like I said, um. Like acting can be very therapeutic. So in everything, you find something. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you're open for it, if you just if you don't understand, that's the way it goes. If you're right. just, um, uh, you know, you have your purpose to be there, and you're not thinking about it as an artist, mm -hmm. um, it'll come. You know, you don't mm -hmm. find, but all of them have have something. But of course, I said, you know, my character Alice, it was so different. Mm -hmm. And again, let me realize uh, what it's like to have freedom, not mm -hmm. worrying about what people think, you know, being able to say what you want, how you want to say it, when you want to say it. Right. You know, um, I really enjoy that, that freedom that she gives me, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't agree with everything she says, <laughs> but... <laughs> right. This you got the right to say it, you know. So, right. Right. I, you know, I love that. You know, I love that uh about that character. And then I did another character that was very interesting that was different than the characters that he had given me, and that was Lillian. Lillian was in Medea's Christmas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she was this, you know, upbred, you know, uh snobbish kind mm -hmm. of um, you know, um mother and wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and that was different for me. Um, okay. And that was interesting to play that because at some point I needed to play that. I needed to play something that was going to uh, balance me. Mm -hmm. Kind of balance me from playing the other parts. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. okay. as an actor, I needed something to stretch me and take me there. And something mm -hmm. I really hadn't experienced. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You know, I really hadn't experienced that. I've been around those people. But I, people always have said, you know, you're very down to earth and, you know, you're accessible and da, 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 da. But that, that, that is not Lillian. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it gave me a chance to, to play that. Mm -hmm. What that was like. And did I have any of that in me? Which I did. Right. <laughs> right. Now, I, I, now, and again, it, it's funny that you mentioned Medea's Christmas because that too was another production that you did. Mm -hmm. um, Perry and um, you know that role like that you just talked about Lillian you know when you were setting up for that role and, and you were you know you were going over your lines and things of that nature 
did it ever like hit you like, okay, this is going to be one of the most toughest roles I've ever had to play aside from all the other characters? Or did you just go into it knowing that, okay, you know what? Well, out of all the characters that I've done, out of all the work that I've done, I know I'm going to go in here and I'm going to nail this thing. Yeah, because I was looking forward to doing it. And, you know, and like most of the time, you know, what you do as an actor, um, for any, you know, people who want to be actors or um, thinking about it, it's like mm -hmm. if you get a character, you create a backstory. Mm -hmm. You know, you say, okay, this person is from here, you know, the, you know they were uh, this kind of kid, you know, they mm -hmm. had this kind of parents, you know, they were this from this part of the country, all that, give them a backstory, then you know the person. So that's what I did with that. I had to create a backstory because this person didn't exist, this wasn't a real person. Right. Um, so I had to think about, like, you know, like, where would she be from and, you know, um... You know, I kind of put her like in, you know, like in Maine and that kind of place that's kind of different, okay. um, a different area. Okay. And so um, it wasn't difficult once I created that story. Okay. But, but I think it had been harder had I not come up with a backstory. Okay. It would it, it came out of, you know, it wouldn't have come out of anything and then right. it would be like I was acting. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. You know, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I had to create this person. And then once I okay. created this person, I was like, oh, there she is. You know, I heard her voice. She talked different. She mm -hmm. walked different. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. So now let me ask you this. So who has been your mo who has been your favorite on screen uh, uh, cast member that you've worked with in some of these productions? Who's Who's been your favorite? My favorite what? What again? Your your, your favorite your uh, your favorite cast member that you you know that you that you've been in these productions. Who who would you say is the who is your who is your most favorite right oh, now? Oh, work. oh, so you trying to get me in trouble? Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 I loved them all. <laughs> Look, good answer, good answer. Now I want to. Now, now I want to ask you this because also you know you you were also in another production, um, laugh to keep from crying. Mm -hmm. um, now talk to us a little bit about that because you know that particular role, you know you you basically, um, you, you know you step you did that character justice as well. So yeah. tell us about tell us about Belinda and you know That's right. you remember her name? Wow, wow, okay. Yes, yeah, tell us about Belinda and what was her story like as for you going into that character. Boom, here we go again. Because it's like life reflects, you know, art and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So as I was doing Belinda in the beginning, uh, I was just doing it as a character. I had the background. She was a single mother and, you know, the the, the uh, deadbeat dad and that whole story. Mm -hmm. But as I thought about it, I was raised by a single parent. Okay. And I didn't really get all of that until like the mid midway of the run okay and the, and then i be but then that's how you grow too you know you, you start out one way and then you discover stuff you right. know right but i discovered that part of that was my mother's story wow. but my dad was not a deadbeat dad my dad was, right but um but she was a single parent and she had to deal with things and she had to make things work for me mm -hmm. um when I wanted to be involved, like, you know, I'm quite sure Belinda, when her son, you know, he's a basketball, you know, you got to figure out how to buy the shoes, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you got to get him to practice, you know, you know, certain things that he would need to make his dream come true. Well, right. that's what my mother had to do. Okay. And so I begin to say, wow, God, is that the way you show me who my mother was and is? Mm -hmm. How I should appreciate her journey and her struggle and how she sacrificed for me okay yeah okay. yeah oh, wow. yeah it didn't even hit me mm -hmm. until you know i'm like you, we've been touring mm -hmm. so it's like the single but when i started getting like emails and stuff like that from fans and they were mm -hmm. single mothers and they were saying certain things and i just realized i was like hey that's my story that's part of my life wow right 
Yeah. 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 That's amazing. That's amazing when you, like you said, when you can connect with the fans and they have that same exact story because, like you said, you never really know. Yeah. You know, so when you find that out, it's like, wow, it, it really does blow your mind. Like, wow. Like, I'm. Yeah, the connection. Of, yeah, the connection. You know, is, is but wild. that's when you know, that's when you know it's not fle just flesh and blood. That's when you know that it is more than just you doing a thing. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's a it's a life thing. It's a mission. It's a purpose thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amazing. Uh, you know, I like I said, you know, I again, I have truly, you know, like I said, from from each time, each play, each movie that I've seen with you, and I've truly, and like I said, I tell you, I'm gonna and I'm gonna continue to tell you this. I have enjoyed every character that you play, every song that you sung. Oh, that's truly, awesome. It's truly been amazing. Um, I got to somehow I, I want to also bring up this particular show, you know, which was also a favorite. You start, you also starred in For Better or Worse. Yeah. Uh, starring Michael Jai White and uh, Tasha Smith, um, you know, so, some of the other great cast members. Um, and you played a role being Ms. V. Now, I tell you about Ms. V because Ms. V kind of reminds me of a little bit of Miss Alice. Now, mm -hmm. do, now, do you see a little bit of the similarity from Ms. V? And Miss Alice, do you see that comparison? I yeah, I think that uh, Miss V is an older version of, of Alice. You okay. Know? I, so I always said that Alice was kind of like a younger Miss V on steroids. Okay. <laughs> you know, okay. Okay. <laughs> Miss V was just you know, Miss V had stories. You know, she did you know the husbands in the car. You know, right? You know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> But it was so crazy because Miss V was just, just um, I don't know, she was just being getting more and more creative. He was getting more and more creative with that character. So mm -hmm. we really saw who she was by the by the fifth season and right. how she became like part of the family. Right. You right. know, she really did because because they, you know because she didn't care what they thought. Right. You know, so, you right. Know, she was trying to keep a job, but at the same time, she was like, "You ain't firing me," you know. Right. So, yeah, yeah, please, you know. Right. But uh, but I loved you know playing Miss V. Um, and it's something about older characters and young characters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when I played with, I don't know, did you watch it when the young guy was there, like that played the son? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the uh, 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 yeah. Bobby J. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um. People loved when Miss V and 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 him was together. Right, right. They loved it. I said, you know what? I did too. I actually, I loved that on screen chemistry that you and him had. It was just so like, it was almost like like you, like the aunt letting you know letting nephew know like okay, right, 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 right. Don't, don't do that, you know. So I I, I could see that dynamic. Yeah, because one of my favorite um, episodes was uh, Just Say No, and that's when he found out that Miss V was smoking, you know, weed. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and she was saying, look, you know, I, th this is prescribed. This is, you know, this this is, uh, you know, medical weed. This ain't, you know, right, just street right. weed, you know. Right. But uh, I, that's like one of my favorite uh, episodes <laughs> Okay. <with> him. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, now, talk to us about working with, again, you know, you, you talk about Bobby J. But think, you know, the cast of For Better or Worse, you know, working with Tasha, working with Michael. Yeah. You know, working with, you know, uh, Coco Brown. Um, yeah. So what was, again, what was, talk to us a little bit about that dynamic and what it's like, to, you know, what was it like being amongst those, you know, that that follow, that does, you know, that are, you know, that you see on a regular basis, if if I might say. Well, you know, um, what I really uh, loved about when I first came on the show was that, you know, they had already been establishing that they were regulars. And so mm -hmm. I came on because it was a particular scene I, uh, that Tyler wanted, and he wanted the maid to deliver the message. Okay. And so that's when he thought about me. Okay. And um, it was a scene with me, with Tasha and I. Mm -hmm. and it was so smooth. It was so wow. easy. Right. And I mean, even Tasha was like surprised. You know, she was like, wow, that was, that was, we was like, yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was good. And of course, you know, we went on, I went on with the rest of the seasons with them, but um, that was the first thing to be able to work 
uh, with Tasha like that and have that mutual respect because right. you, you don't know how people are going to react. You don't, I've never worked with her before. So I don't know whether she was going to be arrogant or that she was going to respect me or whatever that was, but I totally got it. And then when Michael, Michael J saw me do the scene with her, he was like, Oh man, when I'm going to get to work with her? You know, and that was a, such a big compliment, you know, I'm like, wow, right. but and then, and then Coco, you know, I ended up like, she just like welcomed me in. She was like, I was sitting, getting ready to go on um, for the scene. She came over, she was like, anything you need, anything you want, because she had seen me on the plates. So mm -hmm. she was kind of a fan of whatever, but she right. gave me that respect for just the fact I've been doing this thing for a while. Right. You know, right, it's like, right. this person deserves respect. And she came out, she was like, anything you, you want water? And I'm looking at her like, you the star, <laughs> just like you the star of the show, you know. Right, But right. everybody was like that, though. And that made it so easy for me. And by being the first time on screen, I think what made it comfortable for me, that Tyler was directing. Right, And right. I felt that it was somebody that trusted me. Right. You know, and I right. and I didn't know them that well, but I right. knew him, right? And that made me comfortable, most definitely. Yeah. Now, and I, now, now I want to ask this because you know when you when you look at these characters and you see the the dynamics between the characters, it's almost like Tyler he has this thing of bringing real life situations from the real world, yeah, into his stuff. So what I want to get your take on is. How you know what is your what is your insight on how Tyler adds these real life situations that may be going on in real life to his productions and to and to give you guys these characters to play for other people in the world to to see well you know I mean that's been his you know magic as you would say um people try to you know try to figure out like why did, why was it him? You know, you know, why he blow up, you know, and right. I mean, it's just on and on and on and on. Right. Right. Um, and, but that's because that's what he does. He pays attention and he listens, you know, right. he listens, you know, and really first on, he would like even have a place where people could write stuff. And, you know, like if you see the plays, they'll tell you, you know, what their situations were and just paying attention to the people around him, his family, his friends, mm -hmm. and incorporating that because believe me, you're not the only one going through what you're going through. And, right. it's, you know, nobody's is an exception. You know, it's like, please, you know, right. why me? Like, why not you? Right. You know, right. So it's real. So it's right. not like um, when I was doing um, regional theater, okay. uh, uh, I was doing plays that were like, you know, The Grapes of Wrath and The Hot Mikado and, you know, different stuff. It would kind of be like fantasy-like. Like people mm -hmm. sit back in the right fantasy worlds and that kind of right. thing. Right. Um, but when I began to work with Tyler, which I really loved, and one of the reasons why I did was because he was dealing with real life situations and people that I could relate to. Okay. okay. You know, that I, I was like, yeah, that's a true story. You know, that's good. Right. And somebody's going to get this out of it. And he always would have something in there to, to kind of uh, minister to that in a sense. You know what I mean? But, um, that's the difference and people can tell they love things that they can relate to they right. love to be able to see somebody that look like them or right. act like them or in a situation like them that's mm -hmm. what they're attracted to people will try to do themselves i mean just you know vanity is real right <laughs> right it is that it is, that it is. That talk it about is. me <laughs> most definitely most definitely now i want to get into another particular production that you did um, and then I want to get I want to get into bro. I want something I want to ask you about about the show, bro. Okay. Um, you also was in Diary of a Mad Black Woman, um, which you played the singer in. Now that was a line in that movie where you where you used your actual name in this in this in this movie during, right. before you, before you sung. Now my question to you is: Aside from all the characters that you that you've played. Did you ever say to yourself, okay, you know what? This time I'm going to switch it up on. I'm going I'm to use my name in this one versus using the characters' names that I've been using. Well, the thing is, uh, Tyler put that in the script. Okay. And again, you know, it's, it, it's a type of thing where that's not what you usually do. 
You know, okay. you usually don't say your name, you know. Okay. But um, that was one of those situations where he felt he wanted the world to know who I was. And he just felt that I had not, hadn't got the exposure uh, that I deserved. And that was a way he had enough power that he could do that for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's how that oh. ended up happening. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. You know, <laughs> now you, you sung a song, you wrote a song entitled, I Want to Love Again. Um, and I can't begin to tell you, me personally, myself, how many times I've heard you sing that song. Um, uh -huh. But I, 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 I want to know, um, in writing that song, I Want to Love Again, um, how did you be, how were you able to deliver a song like that so gracefully, the way that you did, knowing that, like you said, you know, there's real, there's love out here, but how, what made you want to write that particular song for that particular scene? Well, the thing about it is that song fits that scene. I mean, that's the um, situation that the character is in. And she's been, you know, it's like you came from this abusive relationship, you know, emotionally. Uh, you've been treated bad. And sometimes people heart becomes hardened. Mm -hmm. and, but I believe that everybody still want, even though their hearts are like that, they still want to be loved. There's nothing like being in love and somebody loving you. And you want to, but you're scared. And that's what right. that song is about. I want to, but I don't want to, you know? Right. Um, and so it just sums up the, you know, the conflict that she's going through. Mm -hmm. And, and, and okay. in the arms that, that feel good to her, but at the same time, she's, you know, not, a, not allowing herself to go in completely because she's got this conflict going on, you know? Right. Um, right. It's so funny because I do that song now in my show. I mean, I have to. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, people come up to me and go like, girl, that song got me through, you know, or, right. you know, uh, you know, that song just, it gave me hope, you know, right. um, it's just amazing. Like I said, mm -hmm. that's when you learn your purpose. Right. That's right. when you know it's not just a thing. Right, indeed, indeed. Now I want to get into bruh because, like I said, you know, bruh has been on for a little bit, for a little while now, and I'm totally loving again the 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 the, the show. <laughs> I'm, loving the, I'm loving the chemistry between each of the cast. Now I gotta speak to you about the cast because it's such a phenomenal cast. Yes, right I am. yeah. So you know, going into going into bruh. What was what was your what was your expectation for that show, knowing that you had this character named Alice, who was you know like you said like we talked about before, you know that was feist, that was wild, you know that would say anything. But going into this particular role and working on this show, what has this show meant to you? You know the thing of um, because it's relevant, it was very important for me, um, being that. I, you know, well, you would consider me an elder in the business. You know what I mean? Um, right. And this is kind of like helping to reinvent and keep me relevant. And so that was important. That was okay. important to me that the show was relevant. And like I said, you know, the guys uh, about these four guys, black men who are friends. Mm -hmm. And we don't really see it a lot of that. We don't mm -hmm. you know, insides of that and and not going after each other but being like brothers right right you know right. um and i was just excited and i was really curious at, you know who my son was gonna be i was like okay when when was it gonna look like when was it right, right. like whatever but uh i was fortunate you know to get barry brewer you know as my son mm -hmm. um because he was totally a sweetheart you know, right. just so easy to work with. And the other guys were like that too. A lot of times you get in these uh, shows um, and actors have other stuff they have to do. Uh, that's not necessarily their priority. You know, they're just working, you know. Right, right. But, the, but they were into it. Mm -hmm. You know, they were excited about it and they really wanted it to be good and they wanted to be good in it. 
Right, right. I mean, we were going early. And I mean, when they go through the script, I mean, we talk about it. Don't mm -hmm. we talk it out. We just don't say lines. We, just, we talk it out. Right. And, and I love that. You know, being, being from the theater, too, that, you know, I was just like, oh, okay, now this is, you know, where I come from. Where right. You, you take the time and you learn what the character in the scene is all about. So right. I, I just feel really blessed and fortunate you know, that I was able to get a cast um, that was this creative and had respect for each other. Most definitely, most yeah. definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Now, um, and I know we talked about this in part one, but, you know, you and your son's uh, relationship, you know, it's truly comical, it's truly hilarious. <laughs> Now, has there ever been a have there have there ever been moments where you're when you've been on set or you and him and have been on set, and y'all may have said something or did something that might have not been in the script? Have y'all ever had those type of situations before? Oh, a lot of it, a lot mm. of it, and, and what ended up happening, and, and uh, Tyler would just let it roll. Okay, you know he'll just let it roll, and he's good because he's a comedian. And he's usually you know he's easy to you know just come off the fly. You know, right. improv right. and, you know, that's his thing. And then the fact that I've worked with Tyler Perry on stage. Right. And, and David Mann is brown, you know, because they would just do stuff off the cuff and you, and you right. got to listen. Right. You got to really listen to them because right. they're like, that ain't in that, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to go with them, you know. But yeah. when we do that, that is some of the most natural and funny stuff when right. we do that. And I love that he's like that. I mean, right. it really helped. It really helps me. It helps the story and it helps the script because it makes the script live. It's not just about us saying lines. It's like being engaged, you know. Right. Like right. you got my attention. <laughs> right. That that you that you do. That you do. <laughs> now, I want to ask this too, because uh, something else that I find very interesting is that there have been there have been productions that you've been a part of that you know that when Tyler is in when he's playing the role of Medea, you know, he has these moments where people may be walking in late or they may uh be doing something and he'll stop in the middle of the show and and, and say something and it may be really that funny. So as the cast, do you find you know, is it hard for 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 people for entertainers like yourself that knowing that Tyler is comical as he is that y'all are trying to keep the real after in and staying and staying in character. Is that hard for you for you? Trying to stay in character and laugh at the same time? Um, yeah. But if I stay in character, because you usually have me as the, you know, the person with all, you know, the sense. <laughs> right. Um, you know, yeah. So, you know, a lot of times if I stay in character, I don't have a problem. Right. Um, and it, and it helps him if I do stay in the character. Because if mm. I go out there like him, then, you know, nobody's going to believe the story. You know? Right, 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 right. <laughs> so I, right. I'm, you know, I'm the one to kind of help people come come back, you know. Come right. Back. Oh, it's actually a story, y'all, you know. Right. Um, you know, we call that breaking the third wall, you know. So okay. I'm like, you know, now sometimes I can feel when he wants us to go with it. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's, you know, it's a it's a thing. If you ever watch Cara Burnett, I don't know, mm -hmm. but that's one of that thing where you know she'll start letting everybody else start laughing, and then the people think that's really funny that we didn't just lost it, you know. So right. uh, I can tell when he wants to do that. Okay, uh, that's not many times, but I can tell when if he wants to do that one. But um, oh yeah, I mean sometimes I think he's trying to make me break on purpose. You know, right. I've had a couple of people, you know, they just like, I'm gonna get you tonight, I'm gonna get you tonight, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Um so I have another question from um from Larry Butler two thousand six. He says, Was it hard controlling yourself when on stage with Tyler and Cassie? Yes. Because okay. You know, those two, you got to have somebody to keep it together because she's right. going with him. Right, right. And most of the time, her character is built for that. And right. she just go right along with him and then both of them up in there and I just got to keep it together. <laughs> I'm like, both, are, you know, I'm staying in character telling them to cut it out. 
Right. You know, and <laughs> that's amazing. That's that's you know, it, you know, and like I said, but it's, it's so fun. Right. It's so much fun. Right. You know, you, in, in real life, you just can't take yourself too serious. You right. Know, you can't have no fun if you're taking yourself too seriously. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. So, you know, aside from Tyler Perry, kind of switching gears for a second, you know, you know, you're, you know, you, you came out with, you came out with a brand new song. It is more of a, uh, of a good vibe uh, type of song. It has more like a little jazzy to it. Talk us a little bit about this song that you right. out. That but that, that was, um, that's, uh, tell me, um, tell me what I got to do. Tell me what I got. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So I did that. And I when I and I, when I did the video, like I, I wanted to be outside, you know, because during the pandemic, you know, people were locked in, and everything just seemed like even when people were doing videos, they was doing stuff, mm -hmm. uh, just DI <laughs> type of stuff, you know, it was inside and all kind of weird looking stuff because they weren't going outside, right? Because they couldn't do like a big um, uh, crew, like you know, right. so right. They could do like small productions but i wanted to go out. i was like i'm doing this outside i want people to feel freedom i want them to feel good like you were saying it's a feel good song and it is right you know, tell me what i gotta do you know right. to uh you know to be what you want me to be you right. know tell me what i gotta say tell me why i gotta think you know right like, like what you like to hear you know right. what i'm saying right. Right. Uh, what you like to see you know, you you what you like to see me wearing. You know, most of the women, most of that women think like that. She's just like, right. what do you like me to be wearing? You know, when he come over. You know, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know that kind of thing. But also, it was also for me saying the same thing. It was like, how can I get the industry, in a sense, to to see me like my fans see me? Okay, they get it because right. we know that. You know, the great people, it's so funny because Sinbad said this. He said, sometimes great people are overlooked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, yeah, you uh, know, so that's real. And so it meant a lot of different things to me. Like, tell right. me what I got to do. I did television, film, you know, um, stage plays, made music, billboard charted. You know, all that stuff, you know? Right. And sometimes I have to remind myself of that because sometimes I'll see someone and I go like, oh, oh, right. oh, I done did that. <laughs> right, right. And, and oh, I did that already. Oh, that was when I did. Oh, okay, okay. And see, and that's the, th that's the thing when you have longevity, how do you reinvent yourself without repeating yourself? I agree. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's the trick. But yeah, yeah, I loved it. I did. Uh, I did it all live. I went in the studio, all live. Mu you know, instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, the musicians was in the studio, and because I wanted people to feel something too. Because now we get so that music is so digital. Um, mm -hmm. There's no feeling in it, mm -hmm. um, and it's and it's, it's ear candy, but it ain't doing nothing for the heart and spirit. So right. I wanted something people could feel. You mm -hmm. know, and, and so I decided to do it live. And right. they called that in real time. In real time. They could see me and I could see them and we could just jam and I could see all the ugly faces they made when they played and they could see all the ugly faces I made when I was hitting them notes. And <laughs> that's all. Listen, I, listen, I've, had a, like I said, I've had a chance to, 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 to literally watch the video. And, you know, I I got to tell you, you again, as, 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 phenomenal as that video is um that that truly again it showed the diversity in which you have to wow. put up to put to put out a feel good song like that for everybody to be able to relate to and be, to be able to understand yeah now let me ask you this with the success that you've had in your career did you ever think that you would have touched so many people all across the world or that you would have gained the amount of love and respect, not only from your peer, from your peers, but from the fans that truly follow what you do and support what you do. No, and it has been a true blessing to me, uh, and to realize that too. You know that feeling that you get when you realize that. You know, it's, it's just, we can't even articulate it when mm -hmm. you feel that way. You can't. There are no words. You know. Um, you do it, you start out, you do it because 
you into you and you like what you do. You know, right. like I right. feel like doing this, da da da. Time right. goes on, you gotta pay bills. And then you go like, oh, I got I gotta work. I gotta make this work, you know. Right. And time go on, you realize again the purpose. When people start saying things to you, when they start supporting you, when they start using their hard earned earned money to see you, to support mm -hmm. you, it becomes a whole other reason why you do what you do. Right. Because right. It, then you feel you're needed. Right. Right. You feel like right. you're needed. And that feeling like that, when somebody somebody needs you and you can fulfill it, mm -hmm. is is this an incredible feeling. But wow. I never I never thought it. And that's why I never take it for granted. And I'm so grateful for it. Because sometimes, you know, the business is the business. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. And the people don't get it mixed up. <laughs> right. Because right. it's the business. Right. And so you you need real people. People right. that just with don't want nothing, you know. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> you know, they ain't trying to trick you. They ain't trying to, you know, do nothing. Right. Like right. They just being real people. You need those people to say, hey, I, I like, I care about what you do. You help me in my everyday. Mm -hmm. and, and I just, you know, I'm just thankful that you're here for me. And so to, to hear people say stuff like that, it just, it refuel you. It gives mm -hmm. you uh, more motivation to just keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. The other stuff doesn't. And the other stuff is going to give out. Right. It's because they're going to change and they're going to say, they're going to look for the next person. Mm -hmm. You know, but the people stay with you. They right. Do, you know, and that's the reason why they, you know, the industry even do what they do. You right. Know, um, because they know that you have support. That's right. People be trying to, well, you know, you can buy followers, you know, but at the same time, um, when you truly have followers, mm -hmm. they control the narrative. Mm-hmm. So mm -hmm. whether or not the industry want to do something with you or not, they don't have a choice because mm -hmm. it's the market. And right. there's a, um, um, what do you call it? Um, it's, it's, it's like a, a demand. Demand, the day, hot supply and demand. There you that's go. right. That's right. Wow. So, you know, so when people, that's when, that's when I tell them, don't think your role is not important. Mm -hmm. Because you, because of your demand, I get a job. Mm -hmm. Able mm -hmm. to share my family. Mm -hmm. I'm able to continue to entertain you or give you a message or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever your need is that I can do within my gift. So, okay. hey, yeah, we well, need you. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. Now, I also, two, uh, three other things I want to kind of touch base with you on. Um, you recently um, joined uh, Cameo, um, mm -hmm. and I want to get your thoughts on joining a platform such as that, where you're able to, want to again, not only just connect with your fans through social media, but through video messages. You know, mm -hmm. what, what has that experience been like for you, work, being on Cameo and connected with the fans and really meeting really more and more new people every day? Oh, I mean, it is so personal. When they say personalized, it is. Because when the people come on again, these are real people. Mm -hmm. This ain't no show. This ain't, I don't have to act like nothing. I can just be me. Right. Um, and I feel that way when I'm talking to them. You know what I mean? It's like, right. Right. and it's always, sometimes they tell you what they want, or they just want to talk to you, or they want to send a message to somebody. Um, and a lot of, a lot of mine, um, cameos have been encouraging, uh, mm -hmm. encouraging people. And sometimes I don't even know that. Sometimes they just want me to send them a message and say, I just love you, da da da, just say something to me. Mm -hmm. But as I'm talking to them, just something happens. Like it's like I, it's like some prophesizing happens. I don't know what that's about, but it's happened with this cameo thing with me where I just start speaking to their spirit. Mm -hmm. It's it's um I was not expecting that you know I didn't mm -hmm. know what to expect you know just like I just say some little funny things like happy birthday you know that kind of stuff you know yeah but it got a little deeper than that 
and I start speaking into their lives. Mm -hmm. and, uh, again, God knows how to use these platforms for his purpose if right. you're available. Right. But you got to be available. Got to. You, you got to. to be available. You have to be. Yeah, man, yeah. I, man, and I was going to ask you about that because, you know, you have some you have some people who, you know, who are so... And I don't want to say... Mm -hmm. those things where um, when you are on these platforms, yes, you have people that are connecting with you, but it's nothing like when you see them in person. You know, you know how is that interaction when you get to meet the people in, in, in person and get to see them face to face? What is that interaction like for you? It's crazy because sometimes um, th they'll have to tell me who they are. When they tell me, then I, then I connect it. They'll say, I'm da 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 da. You know, my handle is blah, blah, blah. I was like, ah, you've been like uh, a friend for for a minute. You know, right. we've been talking for years. And this is right. my first time seeing you. Um, that's the thing that I missed during this pandemic. So even, you know, I'm getting ready to do my concert in Jacksonville, Florida, Saturday. Okay. So okay. Um, I'll get a chance to see people in person. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I haven't decided when I'm gonna do a meet and greet yet, because I gotta figure out how I can do it safely. Right. Um, but just even that, be able to feel their energy, like for real. Mm -hmm. Because I always say, we can tell the story, mm -hmm. but the audience are the interpreters. Right. You help, you, what you give us, the vibe, the, 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 the spirit and sense that you give us, helps us to interpret. That's how mm -hmm. you get what you want. Right. That's, you know, how you get what you need, rather. Mm -hmm. So without that, without us connecting, we're just, we're just doing something. Right, right. And when we're like, in, like, is this like in person, you be getting, you be, I mean, what you do, the level goes up. Mm -hmm. 10. Right, it does. It does. <laughs> Your creativeness <laughs> goes up 10 because you're getting this, this vibe from people, this life force. Right. And you're just not getting it from you. Right. You know, it's like, you know, your your story, what you got, I mean, you you done been around that corner a few times. Right. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> I love it. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, true. that's real. That's real though. I, I I truly identify with that. And and it's funny because, you know, as I'm sitting here talking to you, um, you know, I, I can't help but just be so, again, honored and humble that I get to sit literally here on Instagram Live and talk with you because I'm, I'll am i be the first to tell you, like I said, you know, I, again, I'm, I'm a huge Shot Perry fan. So to be able to have that, 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 that support and that love to be able to connect with entertainers such as yourself it truly does makes my heart feel so good to know that i finally have had a chance to meet you and hopefully you'll get a chance to come to north carolina because that's where i am so i get a chance yes. to meet you. you come oh, to my yeah. if that'd you come be to my awesome that'd be most, awesome but i mean um you know congratulations on um having this format you know having your own your own you know um and the fact that you know, you're serious about what you're doing to the point that, I am. yeah, you invest in your time and you're taking time to learn what you, you know, you need to do. So, right. you know, congratulations on that. And Thank just, you. and just keep it up. Don't um, get discouraged uh, because things, you know, things will look interesting. It'd be going good for a while. And all of a sudden it's like, what is that? But right. what is that is like, okay, so what is it that that's putting it to a halt? Right. To prepare me for the next level. That's all that's all that's about. That's Most all that's about. It's no, you know, no thing about that. But we need more um uh black entrepreneurs. We you know, we need mm -hmm. more people who are creating something for themselves so mm -hmm. you can be there for other people because Most you'll see us in a different way mm -hmm. than the rest of the world. Right. And you'll be able to give us the things that we need to facilitate. Most you know, to definitely. Most 
Yes, and 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 again, you know, I'm a like I said, again, you probably gonna hear me say this a thousand times, but I'm gonna tell you right now, and I'm t and I'm letting the world know, I absolutely love you. When I say I love you, <laughs> everything, I love you. So this is one of those things, and it goes back to again being not only being humble, but you know, having the honor to even speak to someone like yourself because I'm because again they say it all the time you know you guys meet people every single day from all parts of the world yeah. so yes. the fact that you so the fact that you give me this time and this and this and this and this in this, this space to talk with you and connect with you truly these 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 two interviews have been absolutely spectacular and I've had I'm so much fun this well, yes, I, I, I love this for the, the rest questions of that you ask. I mean, the conversation. Thank and that's what I mean. We need, we need people who, I mean, you just, you're going in places that other people, they're not even concerned about. But right. that means that people can't get other stuff. Right. You know, they're going to come at you the same way. And people are like, I already know that, da 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 but yeah. the way you're coming, you know, you're coming from a, a broader perspective right. and allowing us to tell the inside, you know, right. not superficial stuff, the right. real stuff. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. One, now, one final thing I'm going to say be, before, before, as my time is winding down, is that, you know, when I had the conversation with Maurice Lautner, another on-screen character that you... Uh, yeah! Saw, yeah, I'm a singing I, part. I, I, yes, I, 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 uh, I spoke with him and was letting him know how great of chemistry you both had also on screen. But I would tell you now, I never thought in a million years that I would literally be sitting here live today talking to the one and only Chandra Corelli. I, I, this is one of those, it's been one of those dreams that I've had forever. When I say forever, I mean forever. Wow. So I'm definitely head over heels that Again, you took your time to talk to me. That has meant everything to me. And I truly appreciate you. You know, you're truly a phenomenal, phenomenal entertainer, singer, actress, the whole nine yards. The list goes on. Well, um, thank you. I'll be keeping my eyes on you, though. You know, you know I'll, you know, I'll come in every once in a while. So yeah, you do, you do. <laughs> I'll and be I checking you out. Most definitely. And I thank you for sending me those uh, those messages, too, also, and replying back to me. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you know when you have fans that really are trying to connect with you, you know, of course, you, y I'm pretty sure y'all, as they say, y'all DMs are crazy. I'm sure of it. Mm -hmm. So to so to know that you're you're responding and you're, you know, you're, you're acting to the fans means a lot. So, again, from myself to you, I'm truly grateful. I'm honored. And I thank you for allowing me to be. Thank you. you know, <laughs> allow me to be here and allow this part to conversation, you know, that we've had. I really had an amazing time talking with you. I really have. Thank you so much. It was great. It was fabulous. And like well, I said, I'll be keeping an eye on you and I'll be popping in once once in a while on some of your shows. So, you know, just listening to what you're talking about, because you always talk about have some interesting people on and you guys talk about some really good stuff. So just God I, bless you and continue to uh to, to bless you and your family and and just stay safe. Most definitely. Stay encouraged. Most definitely. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that has that has been my time. I am the one and only. Yeah! <laughs> 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 we want to thank my special guest, Sandra Corelli, for gracing us with her presence. Much success to you. And we love you. Keep and we look forward to seeing you again. We look forward okay. to seeing you on bro. Let and one more time, let the people know where they can catch bro at on BET. On PET Plus on Tuesday, as a matter of fact, it will be old tonight. And but you can always catch it on BET Plus streaming. So it has the uh, first season and the second season. So just go and binge. It's, Most it's worth it. It's worth it. And also, I want to let everybody know that uh, I'm in Jacksonville, Florida, Saturday at Get your <laughs> the Breezy Jazz House. So, uh, if you Florida people, you know, I know Daytona, y'all over there at Fort Lauderdale, and you know, uh, St. Augustine, come on now, come on through, okay? Because we're gonna have a great time, and, <laughs> and I believe it, Fabulous. I, most definitely. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you guys next time on another bye -bye. podcast. Bye bye, guys. <laughs>